To begin our experiment, we're going to prepare a solution of sodium hydroxide. We're going to start off by measuring approximately 10 grams and dissolving it in about a liter of water. So first we put down our whey paper and make sure that we tear the balance. And then we're going to measure out our sodium hydroxide. When working with sodium hydroxide, we want to be very careful that we don't spill it on the balance. The sodium hydroxide can be very caustic. Uh, it can cause um, lots of rust to the balances and damage our balances. Um, it can also burn our skin, so we want to be very careful. So we've measured out our sodium hydroxide. You can see the mass on the balance here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer that sodium hydroxide to a liter bottle. And then we're going to add some deionized water to that bottle. So we're going to start by filling the bottle up about halfway and then we're going to shake it so that we can get those sodium hydroxide pellets nice and dissolved. partially filled. I'm going to shake it up. We want to do that so we can no longer hear that sodium hydroxide rattling around. We can go ahead and add a little bit more water. And we're going to continue shaking. Once we've dissolved our sodium hydroxide, we're then going to titrate it with some hydrochloric acid so that we can figure out the exact concentration of sodium hydroxide. Remember that sodium hydroxide is a hygroscopic compound. Remember that means it's going to rapidly absorb water. So just as I was weighing it, it was already absorbing water from the atmosphere. And so remember what that means is that my molar mass 
We don't know exactly what it is because we don't know how much water sodium hydroxide has absorbed. So we don't know how much water to take into account in the molar mass. And so this is why we've got to titrate it. So we know it's exact concentration. And we're going to use this in order to do our experiment this week in which we're going to figure out concentrations of other substances. So we can go ahead and, and stop shaking. We'll fill up the rest of this container with water and then we'll proceed with titrating. So now that our sodium hydroxide is dissolved, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We have our hydrochloric acid here. Make sure you note the concentration, that's 0.4998 molar. And we're gonna put that hydrochloric acid into three volumetric flasks. And to measure out my hydrochloric acid, to be as precise as possible, we want to make sure that we're using a volumetric pipette. So this is our volumetric pipette. Remember the volumetric pipettes are going to measure out very accurate volumes. This particular one, we can take a look. It goes to 0 0.02 milliliters. So we're going to take our hydrochloric acid. Using that volumetric pipette, we're going to place our bulb on the top. Just a little bit, not too far down. We're going to place our finger near the top so we can push it off easily. We're going to release the pressure on the bulb to draw the hydrochloric acid into the pipette. We want to do this slowly. We want to get our liquid to our fill line, which is right in here. So what we want to do is get it just above that fill line. We want to push the top off. Oops. So it went down a little bit. That's okay. We're going to pull some more back in, push it off, and then we're just going to slowly release our pressure until it's level with our fill line. So we're at our fill line now. See the water's level. We're gonna then come to flask one and we're gonna release the tank. Remember with our volumetric pipettes, we do not wanna push the liquid out. This particular one is calibrated so that it is 10 milliliters from the fill line to get to this last part. So the fact that there's still liquid in here, that's okay. So it's calibrated to be from here to that fill line is exactly 10 milliliters. So we're going to repeat so that we can get 10 milliliters in our other two flasks. So here we've got our hydrochloric acid and our flasks. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some deionized water. We don't have to be accurate here with the deionized water. Because what we're actually, this particular acid, we already know its concentration. Adding the water is not going to alter that. So we're going to add it. So we get to about the 50 milliliter mark on our on our flasks. And again, it doesn't have to be accurate. Just as close as we can get it. So we've got 50. So now to each of these containers, we're gonna wanna add some phenolphthalein. Remember that phenolphthalein is our indicator? And that phenolphthalein is going to change color when we reach the end point for our titration. So we have our phenolphthalein. We're gonna add just a few drops to each of our flasks.
So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean and condition our burette. So we've got our burette set up here with our burette clamp. To clean and condition it, we're gonna take first deionized water. We're gonna fill a little bit into the burette. And then we're gonna kind of swirl it around and dump it out. So I've got my burette. We're gonna add some deionized water. We wanna make sure the stopcock at the bottom is closed. So when it's turned sideways, it's closed. So we're gonna pour some deionized water in it, making sure we coat the sides. So I haven't filled it completely. I just have a little bit of deionized water in it. So what we wanna do is we wanna turn this sideways over a beaker. And we're just gonna kinda of roll it around. And so as we're rolling it around, the water is able to coat the walls. So again, we're gonna roll it around. We're gonna dump it into the beaker. The other thing we want to do is we want to let some run out the bottom. So I'm going to do that one more time. Again, I just got a little bit of water in there. I'm twirling it around. I'm going to let some out the bottom. So that's to get any other dirt or materials out of there. But now what we need to do is we need to condition it. So we now have a clean burette. What conditioning does is it's getting rid of that water. We're putting the same solution that we're gonna actually titrate with into the burette. Um, if I leave water in here, that's gonna change my concentration of my sodium hydroxide, which doesn't help me in determining what's the concentration inside of my container. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sodium hydroxide and we're gonna pour a small amount into our burette, okay? So, to do that, I'm just going to pour a small amount. And we want to do the same thing we did with the water. So again, just a small amount, it's not filled all the way. We want to let some run out the bottom to remove the water. And then we want to coat our walls with it. And we would go ahead and do that several times. So we're going to take our burette, we're going to return it to our burette holder. So we've got it in our burette holder. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower that burette so that it becomes eye level. We're going to pour our sodium hydroxide into the burette so that, or up to the top, to the zero mark, so that we can titrate with it. So now that our burette is set up, it's attached to our burette clamp, we've cleaned and conditioned it, now we're ready to add our sodium hydroxide. So we want to make sure that the burette is eye level, and we've got a funnel in the top, and we're going to pour our sodium hydroxide into that burette until we get to our zero milliliter mark. We 
when we're using funnels, we've got to be careful because that liquid can come out a lot quicker than we realized. So I'm above the zero mark now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna release some of that sodium hydroxide into our beaker here so that we can get to our zero mark. So we've released some of the liquid and now we can see that we're at about that zero mark. We wanna go ahead and record. This is our initial volume. Um, remember when we're recording and we're measuring this liquid volume, we're measuring from the bottom of the meniscus. So, bottom of the meniscus, down in here. So now we're ready to perform our titration. So we're going to take our samples. So we have our hydrochloric acid with our phenol saline in it. We're going to adjust our burette clamp so that we have our burette just over our flask. So we've got our flask with our hydrochloric acid. We have our burette. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to slowly add our sodium hydroxide. We're gonna watch for that pink color to occur. Remember we're looking for a pale pink color that's gonna last for at least 30 seconds. Now sometimes this pink can be hard to see. Sometimes it's helpful to put white can help us see the pink a little bit better. So see, we've got some pink that's starting to kind of swirl around.
And when it goes really slow, sometimes it's very tempting to just go ahead and open and pour a bunch of your acid in. But you could be completely clear one second and a single drop makes all the difference and it turns dark pink. So there's we're staying longer. So this is what we want. We want this pale pink. Pale pink. So it's starting to go away. But it's still very pale pink. So we're done so with our first trial. So we want to take our burette measurement. So you want to go ahead and record that reading. And then we're going to repeat this for our other two trials. So to proceed with trial two, we've gone ahead and we've taken our burette and we have filled it back up to the zero mark. You want to go ahead and take your initial burette reading. And so what we're going to do this time, so we've got our flask that has our 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and our phenolphthalein in it. And we're going to add very rapidly this time our sodium hydroxide. So from our previous trial, we know approximately where our endpoint is going to be. And it was between 19 and 20 milliliters. So we're going to add very rapidly till we get to about 18 milliliters and then we're gonna slow it down. And so 19 or 18 milliliters, we're looking at when we get to right around here. So I'm adding rapidly, and we are seeing some pink show up, but remember our endpoint's not gonna be till we get close to that 18 milliliters. I'm getting a lot of pink, but it's going to go away. Then adding it rapidly. I'm getting close to the 18. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Now it looks pretty pink right now, but it goes away. Now we're going to add slowly. So we're essentially adding a drop at a time now. Got our pink. This is a pretty dark pink. We typically don't want this. So I said it can make, you know, a single drop can make all the difference. But this is why we do multiple trials. So we'll give it a second, see if it lightens up any. So we want to go ahead and make sure that we measure our volume.
and then we're going to go ahead and set up for trial three. So we're ready for trial three now. We've got our burette set up again. We have it filled up to the zero mark. Again, we're wanting to make sure that we record. Making sure we get eye level. We want to record that initial measurement. Again, just like with trial two, we're going to add very rapidly until we get to about 18 milliliters. So the 18 milliliters again is going to be in this region here. So we're going to add very rapidly to 18. We're at 18. dark but it's lightening up some which is good we want it as pale pink as possible unfortunately it got a little bit of extra yeah. there was a drop that got in there we're gonna try one more trial just to get another very pale pink even though that one was pretty close So again, we want to go ahead and record our volume. It's, um, a little bit of consistency with our measurements. We want to have a at least one more pale pink. So we've filled up our blue red again. So again, we want to make sure that we get that. that initial reading.
pink will go away as long as it is persistent. I'm going to go ahead and record our volume measurement. So with these measurements, we are going to take the average volume used. And we're going to use that to figure out the sodium hydroxide concentration. Um, then we're going to do, so you guys do those calculations on your own. And then we're going to do the next part of the experiment. We're going to take that sodium hydroxide and we're going to use it to titrate another material.